Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Joy, I go by they, them pronouns, and this is my YouTube channel where I talk about whatever I wanna talk about and share more of my life with y'all. And before we get into today's video, I have a few announcements to make, okay? Uh, it's been like a pretty busy-ish week and a half, two weeks. Um, I'm so excited to announce that the Blather Chronicles is back, okay, for all of you who have been listening to my podcast, thank you so much. Uh, I had to take a little bit of a hiatus, and it's all explained in the episode, so go ahead and tune into this past week's, what is this going on, <laughs> into this past week's episode, which is called What Even Is Intimacy? I go into detail about where I've been, what I've been doing. Um, the second announcement that I have to make is that the website is... Well, it was, it was never gone. It was it was still there. But now it is pretty, it is nice. I literally spent like eight, nine hours doing it yesterday and it looks so, so nice. Um, so I would love if you guys could go and check that out. Uh, obviously the links have always been up, but um, I'm really just trying to now kind of like take on the roles of who I know I can be. So now all of my stuff is reflective of that. So podcast is back live. New episodes come out Sundays at 6 a.m. Um, on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And if you guys listen anywhere else and you don't have either of those, let me know. I'll add it to another platform. Um, and then we have the website, which is up. Um, new blog post from the podcast is up as well so look out for some new things there but I just wanted to keep you guys updated and make sure you guys have subscribed to this channel okay press on the little bell tell your grandma tell your dog about it and let's get into today's video Okay, so today's video is all about how, <laughs> I don't know the best way to word this, but like why I don't like our education system and why I feel like it made me for a very, very long time feel like I was stupid, okay? Uh, let's start all the way at the beginning with like elementary school, middle school. When I was growing up, I personally was always given the gifted child thing you know people were like oh my god you're so smart like you just understand things very well but got really good grades um and that kind of made me not get very good study habits so because for such a long time for years and years getting through elementary school and middle school i didn't really need to study to understand the material i never really learned how to study effectively so um i just kind of showed up and got good grades <laughs> and that was that uh this sort of backfired once i got into high school um and later on into the like two and a half years of college that i bothered to do um when i got to high school i realized that the material now was a little bit harder it wasn't like oh my god i don't understand anything um it was a little bit harder and i didn't have the necessary practice to be able to um get through my classes um i never really got like bad horrible grades but it just took an exorbitant amount of effort for me to be able to sit down and study and get through what i needed to get through um and i think like this time of my life is when i attribute my the manifestations of my perfectionism coming out like this was the time where i felt like if i can't do it perfect the first time that i'm not worth anything um mostly because everything that i had done prior to that point i didn't really have to try hard i didn't have to think about it it just sort of happened in the way that it was supposed to um and when i got to high school i was like well if i'm not good at it the first time then it just might must mean that I'm just not good at it at all um, and that did not help when it came to studying and actively putting my mind towards learning I also had like several classes in high school where I just felt very 
dejected is the word the best one I can use you know I had some classes like chemistry class where I wasn't good at chemistry but it didn't matter it didn't like make me feel bad about myself because I didn't want to be a chemist I didn't want to do anything in science um, so me not being good at chemistry was or physics I don't even remember which class it was was not like a blow to my self-esteem was not a blow to my ego because who the hell cares if I know everything on the periodic table or I don't um, but I did have some classes where the the material was something that was more important to me more close to my heart and not doing well in those classes was was rough okay uh, one of the biggest things that I can remember is like in AP English so I've always been into reading and writing I think um, like just now in my life and like if you guys don't know I'm 25 so just now in my life I am finally kind of coming back to being someone who loves to read and write but in high school I was like super into reading and writing and I was really excited to get into this AP English class and I was really excited to like read all these different books and get a chance to you know become better in writing um and i just remember like feeling so out of place in that class not because i was inherently invaluable but mostly because of the just the dynamic between the teacher and the rest of the class like looking back now i was just thinking like okay these other people in the class are other people who are taking other AP courses like really like bright people um, I wasn't taking that many AP courses. I think it was just two maybe three at most um, but I just remember feeling like the teacher was making me feel like I wasn't as smart and I wasn't as worthy of being there as the other people that were in the classroom um, and high school me you know internalized that feeling and I quit the class and it makes me sad to think about it because I, you know, I know at one point I had written something, like a, a, written a paper and I got it back and it was just full of red marks, like, you know, just like the paper was bleeding. Um, and I remember at one point, you know, trying to take on the criticism, um, not doing very well because, you know, especially back then with just the way my perfectionism was set up, any kind of criticism I got was like a blow to my worth as a person but there was one distinct thing that I remember and it was like how a word was structured a sentence was structured and she looked at me and said something to the effect of you know like this isn't how you structure an English sentence and I just remember being like what <laughs> like in my mind, in the way that I speak, in the way that I articulate things, it made perfect sense, like perfect sense. I could take the other criticism about, you know, delving in deeper about this different subject or bringing up this, that, and a third about the character, whatever. But the idea that I didn't even know how to speak English correctly just baffled my mind. And it is stuff like this has just made me realize that I do not like institutionalized learning I I really don't it's um it's very aggressive and very what's the other word like just harsh you know um, to take something that I love so much clearly was interested in learning more about you know how to write how to write better how to write you know more like how to articulate better whatever and to just have it like slapped to my face like that was horrifying <laughs> like horrifying um and you know after that i never really wrote anything i kind of just gave up you know there was no there was no writing of anything there was no there was hardly any reading of anything that wasn't necessary for school and it just I just felt really dejected um, and on the other hand like in, in my Spanish class I remember like you guys have heard me mention like offhand that me and my Spanish teacher had a it was very much like mink 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 energy uh, yeah it was <laughs> it was like that but I just remember um, 
one time we had a project that was due that was like a creative project and I, I can't remember if we were reading something like reading a book we had to do a project on it or I don't remember how the project worked all I remember is that I did it the day before it was due and the thing that I ended up doing was like making a book that had like old timey photos and you know like I used like saran wrap to make the little Polaroids to like make it interactive blah blah blah. I remember him saying something along the lines of like if you had just applied yourself more this could have been a great project something like that. Um, and I just think back on it now and I'm like these are things that I loved to do right um but the people who were teaching me the people who were around me just were not encouraging me at all it did not make me want to show up it did not make me want to be part of the learning experience i did not feel comfortable in those learning experiences i felt ostracized i felt um it's like a new favorite word of mine apparently but i felt like i just didn't have the language to describe why I was procrastinating or why I didn't feel like I was really part of the group um and you know for a really long time I just assumed that I just wasn't smart enough I just assumed that I was like well you know like some people are really smart and some people like me aren't and that's just the way it is and I really 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 internalized the fact that on paper in a lot of these classes and a lot of these um subjects I just wasn't making it to the level that I should have been um and you know that level of where I should have been was created by me being the eldest daughter in an immigrant family like being one of like <laughs> three black people in an all-white school like just not the best foundation for allowing myself to make mistakes allowing myself to learn in a way that is conducive to how I learn so yeah my basic like learning foundation was not very good at all and then we jump to college um I went to college mostly because it was the right thing to do everyone wanted me to go so I was like okay I guess I'll go um if you don't know I went to LIM the laboratory institute of merchandising in New York City for fashion business I was there for like two and a half years until I was too depressed and too anxious to go back um I was not having a fun time I was learning in this way because that is what was expected of me that is what everyone told me that I should do that was the right thing to do um, and that is literally the only reason I went to college I did not want to go I it was never on my list of things that I was like I can't wait to go to college no it was never 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 a thing that I wanted to do I had already learned from my previous experience in high school that learning in this way was <laughs> was not for me I really couldn't understand why people wanted so badly to sit in a classroom, memorize some facts, put the facts you memorized on paper, whether it's a test or written paper, and then go to your next class having forgotten what you learned previously. It just never made any sense to me, but I was 17, what did I know about the world? Maybe everyone else was right. Flash forward to me being like two and a half years, like I said, into college and uh, the college experience for me was rough. I went to school full time. I worked part time. Like it was just not, um, it was not like the fun experience that I had hoped it would be. Um, and I also remember just like being in some of these classes and thinking about how the things that I was learning, I could have found on the internet. Like I remember thinking like where is the personalized um, experience that my professors have that I can't find out of a textbook? Where are the um, projects that are going to simulate what it's going to be like out in the real world? Like where is this interactive stuff? Where is the stuff that I'm paying for? And it was nowhere to be found. Um, it was a lot of like reading textbooks, just like writing papers and I just I was not I was not having a good time I, I can't I don't even know how else to explain it other than to say that I was not having a good time and now it's funny because I, I look back on these things and I look at where I am now in my life I still don't have a college degree and I think that where I've gotten in my life 
it's not that bad. Like, <laughs> like it's really not. I, I really spent so much time harping on myself, being so upset. I was like, why couldn't you just, you know, go the extra mile and like finish what you were supposed to do and get these things done. But now I just don't even have the energy to harp on myself. I cannot even be mad at myself for not finishing college. I can't and I don't feel bad about that. Um, I think one of the reasons that I really don't feel bad about not finishing school is because I finally accepted the fact that I'm not stupid, okay? I, in fact, I'm not stupid. Like, it's just, it's not true. Um, and I've realized this because slowly over time, I've just um, watched myself get into situations where I don't know anything to begin with and then become the best person to go and ask questions to afterwards. Um, you know, I've been in like situations at a job where I'm like, the, the things that I was given to do here, the tasks that I was assigned are not things that I know. These are not things that I just inherently came out of the womb and I was like, oh, yeah, get the knowledge. Like, no, I didn't know these things, but I have an ability to find out the answer. I do like to make sure that I research and look into how a system works or like the best and most effective way to make something work or, um, I, I dig deep to find the answers to my questions, you know? Um, I think to the things that I do on a daily basis, like with my content, um, like you guys just heard that I updated my website. I didn't hire anyone to do that. Sure, it might not be like, you know, world-class grade A website, but I really don't think that someone who has no inherent smarts could be able to just sit down and like, put together a website based off of context clues, working and putting things together like a puzzle, which is what I did. Um, I think society places so much value on whether or not you have a piece of paper that says that you are smart enough to work at this job or that you've met all the qualifications in order to be a functioning member of society. Um, and this isn't to knock on people who have degrees because there are some people who genuinely love to learn in this way. And I love for like, love for them to have the opportunity to learn the way that they do. Um, I wish that people who learned in different ways were allowed the same opportunity to get a degree that may not look the same, but still holds the same value. Um, for me, I've been realizing that the way that I learn best is one, by doing, um, two, through like audio and repetition, and then writing and application. And number five, it needs to be like a good learning environment. Um, I think back to like my Spanish class and one of the major reasons that I did not um, continue in my language learning path because you guys remember at one point i said i wanted to be a linguist or a translator it's because i didn't feel comfortable enough to make mistakes in the presence of my teacher and that is not a good learning environment okay <laughs> if you cannot make mistakes in front of the people that are supposed to help you and push you on your path and correct your mistakes like you don't feel like it's safe to do that there then you're not going to learn very much and I did not feel safe making mistakes in my Spanish class, let alone any of my other classes. I just was not supported by my teachers and that is the reason that I didn't do well in certain classes. In other classes where my teachers were super supportive, were able to like validate what I was doing um, and were also able to sit down with me and let me know when I was making a mistake, I was happy to make mistakes. I was happy to try. I was happy to push myself to do and be better because I knew that I was ultimately being supported. Um, and I just wish that institutionalized learning was made better for people who are like me, who maybe we just need things to be set up differently, not in this, like, it's just so robotic and just so detached and unpersonal and it makes the learning process feel like shit. 
I, for the longest time, just thought I just didn't like to learn, but I do. I love to learn new things. I love when people come to me and they're like, did you know that X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z? And I'm like, no, I did not know that. Tell me more. I love hearing people be enthusiastic about the things that they are passionate about. I love to watch documentaries and, you know, listen to podcasts because these are the ways that for me, learning happens. I love applying myself. I love when I figure out a problem that's been like harping on me and then I'm like, yes, I fucking figured it out and now this thing is perfect. That is learning to me. Learning to me is not memorizing, regurgitating whatever I just memorized, forgetting what it is I just memorized and then moving on with my life. And for the longest time, I just felt that that was a What's the word I'm looking for? Like it was a, it was to my own detriment to think like that. Like when I, I didn't even officially quit college. Maybe I just didn't show up. I just stopped showing up. And um, I always thought I was like, I'm gonna regret this. I'm gonna regret this so badly that I made the decision that I thought was right for me. Like I'm gonna regret this. But it has now been five, six years and I feel great. I don't feel less than for not having a bachelor's degree, associate's degree. I don't think that makes me any less of a person. I don't think I hold any less value than anybody else. And yeah, the, the, the education system is just, it's a lot, it's a lot. <laughs> Okay, so for any of you out there who are watching this video, if you are about to go get your PhD, your master's, your college degree, your bachelor's, your associates, uh, if you are thinking about taking any sort of class, um, before you do, I do want you to make sure that it's actually something that you want to do. Um, I don't think people take enough time to sit down and think about, is this something that I actually want to do? Um, if I could go back in time and change things, would I probably not the idea of changing things in the past kind of freaks me out um but if i was to start over and not have no memory of what i did or didn't do i would hope that somebody would come to me before i apply to colleges and just say like is this something that you want to do do you see yourself um being supported in this path that you take um so if you are about to go to school please 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 at least make sure that this is something that you actually want to do if you want to go all the way and get phd master all that more power to you as long as it's where you want to go go for it um if it's not where you want to go just reconsider reevaluate and figure things out i promise you there is still life out there okay i promise um and if you also are someone who had like a similar experience to me and you don't feel like learning is for you, find your learning style. Find the way that you feel best about learning. There are some people who will just love, love, love to just like read a textbook, highlight that shit, write notes, and then that's all they need. Uh, you might be like me where you need multiple layers. Sometimes I need to hear the lesson and then write it out if I can teach someone else. And that means that I've like, find your learning style because it'll make any previous, I mean, any future thing that you learn so much easier to ingest, digest, and hold with you rather than just trying to memorize things. Just find your learning style. Um, and also just make sure to learn about things that you're interested in. Uh, I, <laughs> I, ugh, I just, you know, I feel like a lot of these things that people want us to learn, you know, science, math, all of that, it, it's not, it's not for me, babes. Um, you know, we live in 2022, we have the internet. If there is a science or math question, I can find an answer online. However, the things that I am interested in, things like history and mythology and, you know, fucking romance novels, those intellectual things too, um, that's what I choose to learn about. Those are the things that I choose to look up and, you know, watch documentaries on. I also like to just learn things because it's for fun, you know? Like, don't forget to keep the fun in the learning. Um, don't make everything so rigid and so callous. That's a good word. Don't make it so rigid and callous. Don't do that to yourself. 
the school system's gonna do that for you. Don't also do it to yourself. And lastly, please realize that academic intelligence is not the only form of intelligence okay just because we're not in mensa does not mean that we have no inherent value okay uh have you ever met someone who's like really book smart but they were just emotionally unintelligent it happens people have different strengths and you know you might be more street smart than you are book smart that is totally fine I, listen everyone needs a little bit of street smarts okay um do not devalue your type of intelligence and your type of learning style simply because it isn't what everyone else gets praised for. I promise you there is just a whole life outside of being publicly praised for having accomplished this thing that society deems as worthy because in an alternate universe we might all be living in an emotionally intelligent world where everyone is just with high emotional intelligence is the one getting praised everyone else with like no emotional intelligence is probably like oh my god i suck and it's not true it's just people are different okay people are different you'll be fine <laughs> All right, hey, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys have any like memories from high school, middle school, college on how the learning institution failed you, put them in the comments below. I wanna, I wanna hear them, I wanna know them. Um, if school was great for you, like how is real life treating you? Is that any different than being school oriented? Um, just tell me everything I wanna know. Uh, do not forget to one subscribe to this podcast okay okay to this podcast subscribe to this YouTube channel and to the podcast there's a lot to subscribe to there's a lot happening here uh, check out the new website let me know what you think if you have any changes edits that you would like to make I can now handle constructive criticism uh, and I think that's everything did I say everything that I needed to say in this video I think I did so I will see you guys next week with another video